thank you uh, for this school for asking me to come and uh, talk to you. It's uh, a school I hold very dear in my heart. It's uh, one that somehow or other has been known to me for over 25 years and uh, always a, a big favorite. And, uh, so it's a special pleasure to come and have a chance to talk to you. I remember one time uh, Mercedes invited me and I became an artist in residence and lived up in the, one of the rooms. I can't find my way around here anymore, but uh, it was a great, great experience to actually live in this school because I, I didn't ever go to art school, so I'm here under false pretenses. I uh, should tell you that in advance so you can and, uh, know that you're uh, who you're hearing from. I'm also somewhat embarrassed and uh, uncomfortable because I've decided to to expose myself, not in any terrible way, I hope, but uh, the chance for students to see uh, the development of the work, such as it is. I don't know why I should be embarrassed because uh, it's just early work. I'll show you a work I did when I was 16 years old and show you how uh, I tried desperately to get my paintings to look like art and uh, couldn't get to that at all. But I want to show those and talk a little bit about that as a premise for how we proceed as painters. And then I should further say, I don't know why I would be embarrassed by showing the early work, because I'm just as embarrassed showing you the later work. <laughs> so uh, bear with me, please. I'm, fortunately, however, you're, you're not going to hear about uh, art. We've heard enough about it, I'm afraid, in my view. Everything is called art. We have old magazines, Art News, Art in America, Flash Art, Southwest Art, Art Forum, International Art, Bad Art, Flash Art, New Art, Art Quarterly, and every course in our university system, for the most part, is called an art course. I don't know how we got stuck with that term. And it's because I think it's a kind of irrelevant term for painters. It's a word which, uh, an idea rather, which is essentially conceptual. It's an intellectual construct. It's always changing. Just when sometimes you think you've got a hold of what art might be as a condition, at least for me, it's like a an intellectual grease pig, as soon as you try to get a hold of it, it sort of slips and goes someplace else. It's very abstract in its nature, and it's taken up with an awful lot of words, mainly discourse, and you can make almost any point that you want by that means. In contrast to that, painting is something entirely different wonderfully different as far as I'm concerned. It's first of all very physical. <coughs> it's concrete. It's not a word like art. Art's more a word and an idea almost like love. And if anybody can ever define that, uh, I'd like to hear about it. But a painting you can touch, it's a thing. It has a condition, a parameter, something which is real. And that's, I think, a very different thing. It's also fixed, doesn't move, silent, doesn't speak, flat. And by that series of descriptions, you can see how easy it would be to say, well, people are right, painting is dead. It's that old flat thing, not going to do anything. And you, they are very, uh, very arrogant about the fact that 
saying continually painting is dead. And they've been saying that a good long time. We might ask what it is that brings it to life on the other hand. And that's, I think, an interesting challenge to us. We have to go to paint. Painting doesn't come to us. We have to have some part of ourselves which surrenders ourselves to this thing. And that's the wonder of what uh, I like to think of as the painted world. What I mean by a painted world is that this is a world that you, people like you and I have made. Wouldn't have come about otherwise. It's a unique, very special, very curious kind of thing. It's one of the first means by which we thought about things like x-ray vision. Painters learn to sort of see through things, around things, into things, over things. Someone said once that poetry is a kind of x-ray of literature. And I think painting is a sort of x-ray of our visual world. It's a means of seeing things which are not easily seen make things there which are not there. And that gives it a tremendous kind of thing. One of the things which we are, have been for such a long time interested in, from the cave period to the present day. This world, however, I think is uh, made up, from my standpoint, at least from three worlds, three quite different worlds. One is the world in which uh, we could say is this like this room. We could all agree, I think, in some sort of consensus that this is a, a room of a certain size. This is a lectern. This is a microphone. These are lights. In other words, it's a kind of reality which we share, one in which we move through and more or less agree in terms of its real prospect. Another world, however, that painting depends upon is what's known as the art, the tradition of art, the tradition of painting in particular. And this doesn't mean the scene, it doesn't mean art now, it means every kind of painting which has been done since the inception of our history. All of the, all of the variations that you can think of, right up to the present. The other world is a very unique world, and that's the world of the self. Psychologists refer to that as the uh, each person's apperceptive mass, meaning every experience that each of us uniquely has had. In other words, the self, the world of the self. I think it's best when these three worlds can come together in some sense of proportional relationship. The reason for that is I think that if it's, if we try to make some sort of visual recording of the world, that seems to be not so interesting to me. In other words, if even if we could, let's say, make a world like this, since we have one already, what would be the point of what would we do? Where would we put it? I would be, would be interested in it. We've already seen it, experienced it. So if a painter, I think, spends too much time in trying to grasp that kind of reality, it's a kind of simple dimension of a lack of interest which I think a painted world needs. The same is true of the art world, which we see a lot of today where artists really, in a sense, get used to talking to each other. You paint, perhaps, for each other. Or if you do that, the tendency is for artists to be talking only to each other, painters talking only to painters. You get a lot of that in terms of criticism, where critics work for each other. And there's this kind of marvelous sort of upmanship about critical theory. There's this marvelous sort of qualification for almost anything with the most dialectical, pyrotechnical means at their disposal. It's an amazing kind of, of language. 
But it seems to me, again, if it's only about that, it lacks another substantive character of dimension of some kind <coughs> of real interest. The same is true, I think, of the self. If it's only about the self, how can we expect people to be interested in that really? Even though all of us have these tremendous egos that we have to support, the danger in only working out of yourself, it seems to me, is that the danger of solipsism and even a kind of neurotic uh, fascination with self limits that structural potential of something like an interesting painted world. The wonderful thing is that painting doesn't have to be art to be wonderful be enjoyed, give pleasure. I guess this is also a kind of high rationalization about my own weak efforts, maybe. But what I mean is that uh, it's so wonderful just to look at painting. And for me, almost anything. That monstrous ego of Picasso, I was amazed to hear one time say, he'd never really seen a painting that he wasn't interested in. Even a little painting in a motel room with a little pink poodle. He said, somehow or other, the agony of that person <laughs> transferring from <laughs> one to another without embarrassing yourself too much is an amazing kind of challenge. So painting, it can be art, and sometimes is, and we can talk about that in a minute. But what I'm really interested in talking about, and the thing at least for me, is that terrific privilege we have to be painted. 